Welcome back to another episode of Speak Out with Christine Jurgen. I'm Christine Jurgen, your host, and today's episode has been a long time coming. When I say I have been trying to get this guest for forever, I mean, like since the beginning of this show, this is somebody I wanted to come on the show. I knew that they were pro-life. I knew that they uh, had these values and beliefs that they were willing to be bold about, but her following is so big that she just gets inundated with messages and requests and uh, people who are trying to work with her. So I messaged her and it kind of didn't go anywhere for a little while and obviously no hard feelings. Um, but eventually she started following me randomly on social media and I said, okay, here we go. I'm going in for it and I got her. And today's guest is Alexa Pinavega. She is an actress, a singer, an author. Um, she has been in Spy Kids. If you guys know what Spy Kids is like huge movie and Funny enough, I actually shared in the episode, my son was just watching it the other day, which is too cool. And um, was also in, you know, things a long time ago from Twister to things present day. She has a new movie coming out called A Paris Proposal. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, she has a book, her and her husband co-authored, that is called What If Love is the Point? And I will be ordering that book to go check it out and read it. I think she is such an inspirational person but I, I love that she's willing to speak out on her beliefs. And she's not just like, yeah, I'm pro-life, but like, I don't talk about it. She's willing to talk about it. And she's willing to talk to people in Hollywood about it. And she's willing to say, you know, I think you're wrong in this instance. And here's why, but I still love you, but here's my beliefs. And I'm going to stand firm and I'm going to not shy away from sharing them because it's what I believe and it's who I am and why would I not share them? So I think it's really inspirational. And it's the whole point of this show called Speak Out to encourage people to, you know, stand in their convictions and share their beliefs, share their values, be bold when defending life, be and, and equip yourself to go out there and talk to people. And um, I know it's not always easy, been there, done that, but we can all do it. We can all do something. Like Zuby said on one of the past episodes, if you guys listen to that, we could just be 10% bolder or just 10% braver. So there is room, there is uh, space for everybody to share about this issue, especially if you're passionate about it. And I want you guys to listen to what Alexa has to say because she's doing this and she's somebody who is actively working in Hollywood. So let's get into it. Alexa, thank you so much for joining us on Speak Out. I, I want to tell you a funny story. So when I have a guest on, um, well, actually, I have two stories. So you were one of the first people I wanted to have on the podcast and reach out to you like forever ago, probably oh. close to a year ago now. Um, and and I didn't hear back, but I know you get inundated with things. So I didn't think anything of oh, it. So I was just like, no, 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 it's totally fine. And then not too long ago, you followed me on Instagram and I was like, oh, I'm going to shoot my shot. I'm going to shoot my shot. Perfect. <laughs> so we made it happen. But I last night that. I was doing some research on you. And um, as I do with every guest before I have them on, I have to you know, know what I'm talking about, even more in depth than just what I know about them from social media or something. And my son was, um, and he's almost... 15. He was in the room in my studio sleeping, reading a book. He fell asleep. But I had oh. asked him, I said, do you know that movie Spy Kids? And he's like, yeah. And I said, I get to interview her tomorrow. He's like, I just watched that the other day. No way. Really? <laughs> I know. And I had no idea. And I'm like, really? You watched it the other day? You're almost 15 years old. He loved it. It's like holding up still. Like this I know. generation is watching it, which is kind of shocking to me because, you know, we have so many new movies now and kids, kids nowadays, like they just, like what they're watching is so different. So the fact right. that they're still going back to Spy Kids, which was so special for me and it's such an important part of my life, it makes me feel really good that kids yeah. are still watching it and still yeah. enjoying it. I just thought, I was like, what are the odds that you watched that just <laughs> and a few just days ago? It. I know, um, so I'm trying to get my kids to do it. <laughs> have they seen it yet? They have. They really, they really do enjoy it. Um, mm. They're still in like the Shark Boy Lava Girl phase, which is another girl, mm. um, and made, but made by the same people, so they have similar feels. But they do right. enjoy Spy Kids. I think it's just aged up a little bit, so they're getting there. Do they get that you're like famous in movies and? Well, I mean, they, does they it like, register to them or like you're just mom to them? It does in a sense like, well, yeah, I'm still mom, but they also know like mommy and daddy are on TV, but that's their mm -hmm. normal. They don't, yeah. they don't really know anything other than that. Um, but the one crazy experience that we had was Carlos was on tour and obviously the whole family went on tour with him and, um, 
Ocean watched so many performances and was just in awe of Daddy. And then he got an opportunity to go out on stage and dance on stage while Daddy was performing. So he goes out there and I didn't realize like how much he watches Carlos's fan interactions. Mm. And the second he went on stage, he ran to the front of the stage and reached out into the crowd to touch that (laughs) fan. I was like, what is this kid doing? Who does he think he is? That's hilarious. It was great. It was really funny because I'm like, oh my gosh, he thinks that's what you do. You like touch people's hands. Right, right, right. (laughs) Totally has the emotion with it too. I love that. So obviously you are an actress, singer. You guys have even written a book, so you're an author. And um, you got your start really early. So I'm curious, like, is that something your mom like got you into like how does how does that work how does a child yeah. star happen you know it's really it's really interesting so my my mom was a model and she was a very successful model but she had kids pretty young um she was only 20 when she had me and i would go everywhere with her every photo shoot that she had she would take me with her and then she had another baby and then like we would both go so it was kind of always this family affair um, and I loved people like, you know, when they're just certain kids, you're like, oh yeah, that kid will end up being in the entertainment industry. Right. <laughs> like, that, like, that was just me. You're doing this at the concert. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for your fan encounters. Exactly. So that was just me. And I always loved Annie and I would just sing Annie all the time. And my godmother, um, actually brought me to my first audition in California while my mom was on a shoot. And I went in and I ended up getting the job on the spot. And wow. it was for a TV TV series uh, for two years. So uh, that was my start. It was amazing. It was such a blessing how it all happened because I do believe like this is where God wanted me and where I was supposed to like the the journey I was supposed to be on. Um, so while yeah, my mom kind of got me into it, I do believe this is where I was supposed to be. It wasn't ever forced or pushed on me. Right, right. So how how different was your childhood. I mean, obviously you became famous, like Spy Kids, like shot you into stardom even more so than maybe some of the projects you did when you were four or five. Right, right. You know, Spy Kids was awesome. Like you hope for those big breaks, right? But yeah. But one thing that I was really impressed with um, that my mom did was um, she really allowed us to be kids and she didn't want us to be jaded by the industry at all. So even though all I knew was set life, I grew up on set and that was such a part of who I was, I I still like, I was still a normal kid. I, um, I, I had chores. I would, if I got in trouble, she would take away me being able to work. She'd be like, okay, you're not doing any movies anymore because clearly you're, you know, you're acting bratty now. So I'm going to take you out until you can act like a good normal kid again. Um, so I really felt, I feel like she instilled some good moral values early on. She was very, very strict, which I think is super helpful in this industry. Uh Um, but, but more than anything, you know, she instilled like a love of God and a love of family. And anytime I did a movie or a TV show, if it was out of town, it wasn't just like she would go with me or send me off with like, a manager or something, the entire family would pick up and go. Because what we noticed in Hollywood or what she noticed, and like I've taken with me into my own family now, is families don't survive because they're constantly getting broken up in this industry. You leave for months at a time. Kids are either missing a mom or a sibling or like you're, you're just losing your roots in your family unit that's going to keep you grounded. And that's how you end up with these child horror stories because Nobody was there for them. Right. And my mom really did a great job early on of like setting a great foundation for us. Well, I'm going to have to tell my son the part where you said, if you were acting bratty, she pulled you off of set. (laughs) She did. She's like, you can't work anymore if if you're not being good. Yeah. I mean, like I have good kids and I'm sure you were a good kid too, but you know, sometimes you just have to put your foot down and be like, you know what? You have to. We're going to, we're going to take this away for a little while. Yeah, we have to. It's, it's the only way that they're going to learn the the moral compass that they're going to be able to live by as they grow up, they're going to be better for it as adults. Like we can't yeah. just let our kids wreak havoc. Yeah. So you're married now. Um, yes. you've, you've been in many movies, um, spy kids. You were also in the Bernie Mac show I saw, which I'm like, yeah. well, okay, that's amazing. And little giants. I didn't know that one. I'm like, I used to love that movie. Like that's yeah. more my age. Yeah. It was um, so fun. But so you're married and your husband also has a level of fame to him as an actor, singer, and you know, you guys author obviously as well too. Um, how do you guys make your marriage work? I mean, 
you both have a lot going on and three kids on top of that. How does it all Um, work? So again, like, because I learned those valuable lessons early on as a kid, we really incorporated that into our relationship from the beginning. Um, So when, once we got married, we came up with a two week rule. And I think a lot of people in the industry do have the two week rule. Um, It's, and, and it's funny because it's not so much that like, Oh, you like you only are apart for two weeks because you just miss each other so not, so much. Like, no, actually, what happens is after two weeks, you really learn how to live without somebody, and mm-hmm. you start forming your own habits, your own independence, which which is good to have independence in your relationship. Um, but you start getting used to doing life without that person, and then when you come back into your marriage, it's really hard to jump back into it because you're starting to relearn things again. You've also changed a little bit, like little things. It it actually becomes really dangerous. And it's, it's the world is not set up to glorify relationships, specifically marriages. And because of where our world is at, everything is about dividing and conquering. So, so I think any open opportunity that you have for your marriage to possibly be like split, like it's going to happen. So for us, we're like, we don't want to let even like a crack in the door for that opportunity to happen. So we set the two week rule, um, early on, but then as we started having kids, we're like, this is hard. I don't want my kids to not have a dad and I don't want my, like, you know, him to just have the kids while I go off and shoot my movies. So we yeah. really just, for the most part, like COVID shifted some of the stuff a little bit, but for the most part, if I'm filming something, Carlos won't take a project. He'll just come with me and we'll be together as a family. If he's working, I won't take a project and I'll go, we'll focus on him. And we just do one thing at a time. And, you know, in the beginning of some of our team members did not understand why we were doing this. Obviously, like financially, they're like, wait a minute, we could be making so much more money if you guys are working at the same right, time. Right. All these opportunities, why aren't you taking them? Um, but for us, that wasn't the priority. Family was a priority and our marriage was a priority. So to like, sorry, I know this is a really long-winded answer, but to get to marriage and prioritizing our marriage, um, we had our fair share of ups and downs. And we do talk about that in our book a lot. Like there were times where if we weren't married, we would have broken up. And I think there's something really powerful about marriage that people are losing today is marriage is so holy and so incredible. Like you can be together for eight years, but then suddenly you get married and you're just like, something changes. There's a shift in your relationship because you enter this like really cool, holy space. That's really sacred and beautiful. And there is this oneness, there is this unity. And now what we do because kids really like they're the biggest blessing, but to a marriage, they can, they can tear your marriage apart if you're not really focusing on each other. So we make sure that we come before our kids, because if we don't, and we start putting our kids before each other, we become a house divided and we want to make sure that we're on the same page and we're the ones like making the decisions together and it's us first because when we're good the whole family is good yeah that it's (laughs) absolutely beautiful the way you said that because you do enter into a union and it is something new and you have to be you know a lot of people like to give up these days and the divorce rate is incredibly high so you have to I've been divorced. I I'm I am actually I was married before my husband and it I was it, yeah, it was a very different like we actually we um were very cordial with one another and and it was it ended up being okay, but um yeah, I got married very young um and for me and Carlos like our faith ended up being like the biggest driver in our relationship because we're both fighting towards the same thing. So like for us like God is the center of our relationship. So it doesn't matter how chaotic life gets, we're in the same race going towards the same thing. Whereas in my past relationships, when life would get chaotic, because we weren't in the same race, we'd be running all in, in all different directions, right. trying to catch each other. And, you know, that's the relationships just wouldn't work. And it's amazing how like finding your moral compass, like for us, it's our faith really centered us and gave us that foundation of like, all right, we're in the same race. We're aiming towards the same prize and we're in this together. So no matter what happens, no matter how much poop hits the fan, like (laughs) we're in this together. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. And it's very inspirational because marriage is hard. 
It's work. It is. You know, it's not always it's easy. Stuff. You're constantly working. You know, you love someone, but I always say love is just as much of a choice as it is a feeling. Sometimes that feeling isn't there and you're like, but I love you and I have to do it. Like we have to work through this. Yeah. You know, I might not feel like I love you right now, but I know that I do. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I want to ask something. Um, and you can tell me if this is like TMI back off, no. but when you're in movies and you have a new uh, movie, a Paris proposal and right. which I'm eager to see and Thank you, you it, it, there's romance in the film. Yeah. How do you guys navigate that? Because to me, I'm like, if my husband kissed somebody on screen, I'd be like, okay, well now I have to kill you. So right, right? I know <laughs> how does um, that work? No. It's so funny. This is actually a conversation that we had to have very early on in our relationship because um, I was on a television series for CW. And as you know, CW is very, um, it can be very sexualized. Like they just, you know, mm -hmm. they're, I don't know. They just like glorify, um, hookups. Right. Yeah. And I was also in a very different season in my life. So I took that show and everything was great, but then, you know, it was really messing with our relationship, not me like on set it's very professional and, and and at the time that was something that i was a little bit more comfortable with not any mm -hmm. longer but um but it really messed with our relationship because we hadn't set those boundaries yet we hadn't really said like hey i'm actually not okay with this i'm uncomfortable with it but um we we figured out what our boundaries were in our relationship and what we were okay with and what kind of stories that we want to tell and again it goes back to like our moral compass and what do we want to promote? What do we want to stand for? And, you know, even then, like kissing in a movie, it, it, it depends on which way you look at it. And it's something I still am trying to navigate in all honesty, because no, when you're on set, you really don't feel anything. You have like a ton of people staring at you. It's not cute or like sexy or anything like that. It's very mechanical. And that's mm -hmm. the best way I can put it, especially these like Hallmark kisses, right? It's like, like at one point, I know Carlos had to do a movie and fireworks are going off in the background. They're like, it's going to feel really weird, but you guys just have to like hold a kiss and we're going to hold it for one minute. So literally he's just standing there. Like, but could you imagine? Like, I wouldn't even do that with my husband. Like you're standing right. there just like mouth to mouth with a person. Your and nose just, breathing on them. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, like, and I think people do forget, like, it's really not cute. It's actually kind of like weird and uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but, but we've just come to a place of, we both look at the projects together. Each project is a standalone. Um, I think a big thing is intention behind your heart. Like when you're doing a project, if for whatever reason we were going through a very difficult time in our marriage, let's just pretend we're going through a difficult time and either one of us were to take on a role that required more than like, just like a, a little bit, I don't know, like, I don't, we probably wouldn't, but like, we're just in hypotheticals, right? Um, mm -hmm. Just a very like more intimate kind of scene where you're very, very close with your, your um, coworker. Um, and it's more than just like a Hallmark movie, right? Mm -hmm. I think that could be really dangerous for your marriage because yeah. if you're already not doing well and then you take a role like that, you just don't know what kind of doors you're opening up. So really understanding the season that we're in is super important for us. And, and, and going back to prayer is like, does this role make sense for where we're at in our lives right now? If it does, great, we'll take it. If it doesn't, we pass because it's just not worth it. I hope yeah. that answers the question. No, no, it does. I just, I always like wondered how people navigate that because that must yeah. be a very interesting, you know, like you, there's a fine line of what you're okay with and what you're not okay with and yeah. you don't want to teeter over that line. And so no. I just, that was just no. like a personal thing. I was like, I wonder how they handle that. Well, and just like sets are like summer camp. People are super, super flirty. And that's mm -hmm. another thing we had to learn early on was, you know, we both had flirty personalities and we really thought that flirting was innocent, not understanding the kind of doors that we were opening and also how disrespectful we were being to one another by having these flirty relationships, even though it wasn't like, oh, we'd ever act on any of these things or whatever we had to break it down and we like, okay, well, why are we flirty with people? Well, is it cause like we need validation? We want to be liked. Is it a little bit of both? And we kind of had to get to the root cause of like flirty and then break it down and go, okay, we can be kind and nice and friendly without being flirty. And that won't compromise 
anything in our relationship. Yeah. So again, we just had to rework our our personalities in a way when we got together and got married so that we could be respectful to one another. Yeah. Why are sets flirty? Like why why is Hollywood that way where it's just that's just the I norm mean, there? I mean, yeah, it, I mean it's kind of like high school. I mean, you just have a mm-hmm. bunch of people working in close quarters for anywhere between 12 to 20 hours a day. And you are there for months at a time. And these are the only people you see. And people are like funny and silly. It, it Again, like the best way I can say is like summer camp high school. And yeah. you have to set very, very clear boundaries because again, the world is not set up for relationships. And you see it all the time. Like in our industry, you just see, you just see people fail and mess up. And it, it breaks your heart because a lot of times you know all these people's spouses and like you yeah. can see what's happening on sets and you're just like, Oh, come on. So, yeah. So it's, it's hard. And it's, it's not just cool. Hollywood. It's that's, yeah. that's everywhere. I mean, it's in, it's in yeah. politics, it's in sports, yeah. it's in, you know, schools, it's in your everyday, you know, everywhere. regular jobs, you see it all over. And it's, it's unfortunate. Um, it's why I love the Mike Pence rule that everybody talks about. People make fun of him for it, but he won't be seen alone or go no. anywhere alone with another w- woman. I love that. It is absolutely fantastic because there's no room for error. Mm -hmm. There isn't. And if somebody tried to make something up and say like, well, this happened, he can literally say like, well, I'm never alone with any woman. So no, it didn't happen. It's a great rule. Yeah. And all that, all that it takes to give in to temptation is to open those doors a few times and just, you know, maybe you go out to dinner a few times and And that's it. It's not like it's nothing. It's nothing. But then you open that opportunity is there. Yep. yep. The door's so, open and it just all sorts of stuff comes in. Yeah, totally. So you were on one of my friend's podcasts, Alex Clark, you were on the spillover yes. and you right. said that you were hardcore pro-life. Explain yeah. that. <laughs> um, okay. So I honestly believe that you either believe in life as life as a whole and you see babies, whether babies are in the womb or outside of the womb as life or you you don't and I just can't see anything past like once life begins that is a whole baby that is a beautiful life and for me I will do whatever it takes to protect that and I think a lot of people feel like in today's day and age if you're pro-life that means you're just pro-birth and Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge misconception on what being pro-life means. Pro-life means like all of life, like looking looking at the aspect of the child, but also the mom, like the mom needs resources, the mom needs help, she needs um, love and guidance and sometimes finances. So I just think that we're just in such a dark, dark place in our world. And, you know, people are calling good bad and bad good. And, and we're, fully seeing it like we're in a war right now and it breaks my heart that people have been really manipulated into thinking that human life is 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 just so disposable and they can't even look at a baby as like something that is a human like that is alive they see it they keep using like a clump of cells a clump of cells and i'm just like well we're a clump of cells then because Mm -hmm. we have you know, like we have tons of cells running in our body. So I don't know when I go back to why am I hardcore pro-life? Because I believe that you're, you're killing life. Like I really do. Have you always been that way? Is that something your mom instilled in you? Uh, You know what? It, it wasn't like my mom was like, you have to be pro-life. It was common sense. Like if somebody gets pregnant and there's a baby in the womb and a woman miscarries, it's tragic. It's detrimental. People, people mourn with that woman. Right. And it's hard because then she has to, you know, even at just like 10 weeks, let's say she has to pass the baby and it's heartbreaking and it's traumatic and all this stuff. But yet we can do the same thing to a clump of cells and it doesn't count as a life or a loss. And me, that doesn't add up. And I also think you're doing women a great disservice because it sticks with you. So every time you get pregnant 
the cells of your baby are released also into your body. So you are literally connected with your baby through every pregnancy, which is why when when women do lose children, it's super, super hard. So if you make the choice to get an abortion, in the moment, you might, whether like it's truly your choice or somebody else pushing you into it, in the moment, you might feel like this is the only option I have or this is the right choice and I feel good about this choice. But you're forgetting that that baby's actually going to live with you for the rest of your life because yeah. you are literally absorbing parts of that life into yours. So you will forever be connected to that baby, whether you know it or not. Yeah. I actually saw something and I, I, I want to say it was like a viral reel or something just yesterday or the day before that was talking about that, how the cells in your body not only can help repair the mom if she has an injury or the, in a baby's body can help repair um, the mom if she has an injury, but also some of the cells remain in the mom even after the baby's born. And there was something that this, oh, I'm going to have to go back and find it. But right. there was something that said that 18 years after this mom had given birth, they could still find cells of the baby in her, something along yeah. those lines. And I'm like, right. that is incredible. And that's, yeah. I mean, it's such a strong connection that we have with our kids. A mother child bond is so unique. And, and it's something that cannot really be explained because it is so miraculous and it, it yeah. is, the design is unreal. Um, and it just makes me really sad that we're just, throwing all of these beautiful facts away yeah. because of mostly, I would say like 98% of the time, convenience. Like yep. it's a convenience issue. It is. Um, it, it's unfortunate. There is um, There was something that happened to me last year that um, I've never, I had, I'd never experienced before. Like I, I talked to people who were pregnant about, um, you know, just like, you know, about abortions and whatnot. But I had a moment um, where somebody reached out to me, uh, a, a man on social media, and uh, he's he's a well-known guy. And he's like, hey, listen, I just got a message. And he's like, and I very rarely open my messages from fans, like in like this thing. He's like, you don't really know me, but I know that you are pro-life and I need a, I need a woman's advice and help on this. And I'm like, okay, so talk to me. And he goes, so um, this girl's sister reached out saying that she's going to go get an abortion. And she knows that she's a fan of me and she wants me to talk her out of it. But I don't feel like I'm necessarily in the position. So would you be willing to jump on a Zoom call with this girl? And I like was so excited at this possibility, but also like, I've never had this conversation before. What do you even like, what do you say to a young girl who's in this position? It's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I think she was 16 or 17 and, and she's just in this position of like, I don't really know what to do. So for about an hour and a half, we all spoke and, um, I just told her about the joy that I have with my kids. And the greatest thing that I ever felt was like being able to tuck them in at night and like seeing their beautiful little sleeping faces and touching them and like, and like, like doing the, like the little tickles on their head. Cause that's their yeah. favorite way to fall asleep. And I'm like, those are moments that just are so life-giving. They're so simple. And yet they're the most beautiful things you can experience as a mom. And I'm like, and I don't know how else to explain that to you other than it will change your life and that's it. And you know, we ended the phone call and, um, and she really honestly all, on the phone call, we didn't really think she was convinced on like trying keeping the baby and not that we were feeling defeated, but we were just kind of like, man, I don't know. It could really go either way. Like I told her everything I could. And I tried to say like, I understand the position that you're in and how hard that might be, but you know, we like, we will be here for you. Like we can be yeah. your resource. If you want more resources, we can find more resources. And what's wild is she decided to keep the baby. And mm -hmm. I like, I have a relationship with her and I get to see this baby on social media. And literally, I can't tell you how many times, like I see this beautiful little girl and I start bawling. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, like she could have not been here. And like, not to say that it was me or this other gentleman who necessarily like saved her life because ultimately it came down to the mom, right? Like it was yeah. her mom's decision and choice to keep her. But even to play like the tiniest role in that girl's life, 
I will forever feel connected to her forever, yeah. forever, forever, yeah. forever. And That's it's just incredible. Wild. It's a wild experience. Yeah. That's amazing. So, I mean, it was you, I mean, it was God working through you to like, sure, yeah. sure. But I think it was more That's like, a- it took everything. Like think of her sister who had the courage yeah. to like reach out and say like, this isn't, I know this path isn't for my sister. So help, please. Can you guys yeah. please help? And then that guy, instead of just saying like, no, like they'll figure it out or trying to do it himself. He randomly reached out to me. So it like, it's amazing how like God really used a team of people, like a body, right. That came together to support this one woman. And it just, it just makes me realize like, we are all so special. That was just one girl. Like we, I think, I think people forget that so many people really are prepared to show up for like you. Yes. I, yeah. I mean, at any moment, sometimes we just feel really, really lonely or we feel like, oh my gosh, we don't, we don't have anybody or, or anything. And, um, you know, I'm on my own. And for some people that might feel like the case, but I guarantee you, if you just like reached out, even on social media, random strangers would show up for you. Yeah. Cause that's it, literally what happened. Yeah. No, you bring up a good point. And I was going to say that it, basically that because you are the proof and many other people who are pro-life that we don't just forget about them after the baby. You still have a relationship with her. You still keep in touch with her. You, you were willing to walk that out with her and say, Mm -hmm. if you need resources, you know, I have resources, but even if I don't have enough resources, I can help you find more resources. They say, we just, you know, you care about the the baby and that's it. Once the baby's here, you're gone. And that's, I have, I have not seen that be the case. People that I know, in the, who are pro-life are the most generous people who would give their last paycheck, who would give the shirt off of their back. They would give everything. I have had people, I do baby showers for mom and I have had people message me and say, this is the last $4 I have in my bank account, but I want to give it to this mom. You know, it is. Oh, I just got goosebumps. It's such a beautiful, and I actually bought this necklace that I'm wearing is a necklace from Israel and it's called a Pruta, I think. But it's, if you know the story of the widow's mite in the Bible, yes, um, it's, you know, Jesus says that the widow giving just a few pennies is basically a lot more than people who have a lot of money who aren't, who are still giving more than her, but it's not considered as much and it says that she's giving more. And this is yeah. one of those coins. So um, I bought that for my husband for his birthday. Did you really? I had a, I have widow's a friend mite? who does, yes, I have a friend who does archaeological digs in Israel and I'm like what have you found like recently do you have a widow's mite on hand like can I please buy it for you because I want to make my husband a necklace because I do believe like we are supposed to give our like our best and our Mm -hmm. last like whatever we have left like we are just supposed to give it all so for him it's that symbol of like I'm gonna give my all even if it's even if it's just a little widow's mite like I'm gonna give everything I can I love, well, I feel like now I'm connected to your family. Because <laughs> yes, yes. But I do. Um, I want to say one more thing on, about this girl. Yeah. Had, and this is something really, really important. Um, had she gone through with terminating her pregnancy? And, um, and I think we say that in like a really kind way, but it's going to sound mean what I'm about to say right now, but the truth is like killing her baby essentially. Yeah. And that's what it does emotionally to a woman. Um, I think most people think like we're automatically going to be like, like cut them off or make them feel like bad people. But especially for the women who have decided to go through with it, they're going to need even more love and care. And like if for anybody listening right now who who's, has felt maybe defeated because they've tried to help somebody and they ended up going through with it please still show up for them because they're going to need so much love and guidance and um, they're probably scared. They might not admit it, but they're still going to need to know that regardless of the the decision that they made, even if you don't like it, you have to try to show up for them because if we care about life, like we care about all life. Yeah, exactly. And oftentimes we see the abortion industry preying on these women and they do feel backed into a corner and they do feel like they have no other resources or no other choice to make. And it's not necessarily one they want to make. It's, it's not, uh, you know, obviously there are some people who maybe know exactly what it is and know exactly what they're doing, but yeah, especially and I, know those people. Girls. I work with those people a lot. And you know, that's something about the entertainment industry that is really interesting. And 
we have to try to find a way to have a mutual respect in our, our industry. So like the people that I've worked with know where I stand on all yeah. of these things. I'm not quiet Good about it. I'm, I'm very vocal and honest, but I'm never going to shove it in somebody's face and tell them how bad they are. And, you know, I, I've worked with a, a few people who have had multiple abortions and they're like, I know, I know you don't agree with this. And I'm like, look, I love you. I love you. I disagree wholeheartedly. And it hurts me that you've, you've gone through with these things, but it doesn't change the fact that I love you. And I'm going to try to be here for you to yeah. whether it's pick you up or be your friend or talk you through it. But at the end of the day, I think we're covering up the reality of what it is. And it's, you're killing a child because we keep calling it like terminating a pregnancy or terminating a fetus, which by the way, fetus is, I think it's just Latin for child, isn't it? <laughs> Latin for child. Yeah, it's so like, preborn human baby. Yes. Yeah, so like we're trying to make it just sound like as simple as like taking a piece of paper and throwing it away. And, it, and it's not that like, you're making the decision to go like, okay, I'm killing a child. And some people are totally fine with that. We're seeing it now with people saying, well, you can still kill the baby after you have birth. <laughs> like after you yeah. give birth, you can yeah. still kill the baby. So we're clearly on another level. And I think that's where like, you know, we get into a lot of like demonic, crazy territory crap. I mean, the fact that like the satanic church pays for so many people to have abortions, they call them <sighs> ritual abortion yeah so scary. I think it will it, it just shows you like well if these are ritual abortions that are considered sacrifices you have to be alive to have a sacrifice mm -hmm. so it is human life because they're sacrificing human life in these abortion rituals so it's very interesting to me that we're just so and I guess it's like what is it ignorance is bliss we're choosing to be ignorant to all of these things because it's easier than actually going, oh my gosh, like this is a real issue. And I don't know why people are scared to talk about it. Like if you believe that human life is human life, like then when does it start? Yeah. Yeah. We have to, we have to talk about it. And that's why the name of the show is speak out because it's to <laughs> encourage people to speak out about this issue and equip them and show them other people who have amazing careers, who are doing amazing things. And they're willing to put that on the line. And that's mm -hmm. not to say somebody who is a plumber or a trash truck driver or teacher doesn't have things to put on the line too, yeah. but I mean, your name would get smeared and, yeah. and you've done it very gracefully and wonderfully. And I think it's amazing, but I want to show people like, look, there are people who are like literally out there in the limelight and they're still willing to hold true to their beliefs and speak out on this issue. I think you have to, it has to go back to like, you can disagree with people. You have to have a love for people yes. and it, it's a heart issue. It's yep. literally a human heart issue. So there are plenty of people that I disagree with and can totally get under my nerves, but I'm like, man, they just need love. Like they need so much love and it's easier said than done, but like mm -hmm. grace goes so far, especially with the t hot topics of today. And, um, and look at the end of the day, I, I remember like when I first started like very like really speaking out about it and it was kind of considered like taboo and cliche and like people stopped working with me because of it. Um, you know, just like different like brands are like, we don't want anything to do with her. And I'm like, that's fine because this is just my belief. Like I can't yeah. like, I'm not going to deny my belief. That's something that I will like go to the cross on <laughs> because for me, this is where I stand and I stand stand firm in my beliefs I'm not gonna waver um a couple mean tweets or mean people online aren't going to change my mind yeah. on where I stand and yeah. and I think it's just knowing that and standing confidently in that there's a power that I just can't explain it's like you feel untouchable at that point because it doesn't matter what people do they can cancel you they can hurt you they can say mean things but you know you're making the right choice and you're standing in the right place. Yeah, if you know what it is. I feel like once you know what it is, you kind yeah, of, of course, have to of speak out. You know what I mean? Otherwise, you're if you're silent, you're kind of complicit in this issue, yeah. you know? And so I think 100%. that we have to. You touched on something a little bit earlier, which is actually one of my questions. Um, have you, you've obviously experienced this with 
co-stars or people in Hollywood, you just kind of mentioned that. Have you like witnessed to people about this issue? And I know you say, you know, like, I still love you, but yeah. ha have there been a lot of instances of stuff like that? There haven't been a lot of instances because look, with the exception of press events where it's, you know, very pro-choice press events where people are talking about like how happy they are about their abortions and celebrating it and all this stuff. Like that's not how set is. Set isn't like, I got an abortion last week. So it's not quite blunt like that. But when you do work in close quarters with people, you do get to know them and you do get to hear about them. And, you know, as you get to know these people and care about them, when you hear about these things, you can't help but be like, oh my gosh, like, like I wonder had I been there for you if it would have been different. And, you know, like, it's so important who you surround yourself by. Like it really, really is because you are the company you keep. Um, so it just, I don't know, like set isn't as simple as that, as like, you know, shouting out all of your dirty laundry, right? Um, I have had a couple moments where um, it didn't necessarily witness to somebody before the fact, but it was definitely afterwards and just loving on them and letting them know that I still care about them and I still love them deeply. Um, so I'm trying to think of another instance. Um, I mean, I have family members who have, who have gone through abortions, who actually have had so many abortions that they cannot have children and yeah. now they want children. And, um, and it just breaks, it breaks my heart because, you know, it's just a different mindset. It's a different way of thinking. And I can't understand it. Like, I wish I, I wish I could, but I can't because I just, I know where I stand on it. And like, I really do see it as life and it just hurts me for them. It yeah. really does. Well, and that's another aspect that they don't often tell women that you can become infertile or this can damage your uterus in ways, yeah. or you might not be able to conceive at a later time, but they right. don't tell you that because that's not right. beneficial to their paycheck. No, <laughs> you know? it's not at all. It's not at all. And it just makes me... It, I just feel like it's a very manipulative industry and they prey on people who are feeling weak. Look, if you are in an unplanned pregnancy, I'm talking about like whether you had a one night stand or even if it was with your boyfriend and you're young or whatever, 100% it's terrifying. I remember when Jamie Lynn Spears got pregnant, people were bagging on her at like, what was she, 15 or something? Really? Young, and yeah. I remember at the time, instead of like my mom being like, can you believe it? She was like, good for her. She's keeping the baby. And she went public about it. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, oh my gosh, can you believe at 15 she was sleeping around or whatever? Like, do you know what it takes to literally like be in the limelight at 15 years old and come out and make the decision that I'm keeping my baby and I'm yeah, I got pregnant and I kind of, I made a, I made a uh-oh, but this uh-oh will now be my miracle. I love her story. And I don't know if you have a connection, but I just have to, <laughs> I would love to like talk to her about that, but that it, it's such a great point because I actually, and I think I may have even brought it up on the pot, one of the podcast episodes I've already done, but, um, similar with the Kardashians, not that I've <laughs> I appreciate everything they do, but I remember when Kylie Jenner got pregnant and she wasn't married and I think she was like 19 or 20, pretty right. young. And, and I had my son at 20 years old and mm. people were ragging on her for not being married. And I get it. You know, you, you yeah. should be married. God's design for marriage and family is such a beautiful thing. However, I was like, you know what? I'm not a big fan of the Kardashian family, but good for her for keeping her baby. Good yeah. for her for showing the world she's choosing life. And yeah. that regardless of it be married or not, she's going to, to provide for this child and be a mother. But I think that's a major mistake that we have in our church and in our society. And it doesn't make any sense. So uh, within the church and not all churches, but like within the church, when girls get kicked out for getting pregnant, obviously for having sex before marriage. Are you kidding me? That doesn't make any sense to me. If anything, that's the time that you bring that girl in and you love on her and you, you just go like, you know, thank you for choosing life instead of covering this up and hiding it. Thank you for, thank you for bringing this blessing into the world. Was it, 
was it how it maybe should have intended to be? Like, no, like you kind of went the backwards way, but that's okay. <laughs> like we're going to, we're going to love on you. We're going to support you. Let's figure out how we can get the dad involved. Like if the dad is still around, like let's figure out how we can build you guys up and teach you how to be a family unit, like mm-hmm. instead of outcasting you. And so um, there was a girl at my church who, who got pregnant and she was only like 16 or 17. And what was amazing was like, our church really embraced her and loved on her and just like poured out to her. And what broke my heart is like in most cases, not in most cases, but like in old church, you can, oh, I'm sorry. Can you hold on one second? Yeah, we're sorry. pro-life. This is real life. Yeah, I know. Like, hold on. I have a baby. We support motherhood. <laughs> Maybe you we have a little talking. kiddo knocking on her door. If you're, if you're not on YouTube, you can't see, but there's a little kiddo knocking on the door. Yeah. I have a little baby, but you know, I have some help today. So they're going to run outside. She's, <laughs> She's really letting me have it right now. Okay. Well, I've had my daughter walk in and I've literally had to call Kevin when he's editing. I'm like, my three-year-old came in. I don't think you can see her, but I'm pretty sure you might be able to hear her say, can you come wipe my butt? So... <laughs> <laughs> I have to find that. That's real life. That's real yes. life parenting for real. Um, yes. Okay. I'm so sorry. So I'll go back. So basically there was this girl in my church and she got pregnant and our church was incredible. They just embraced her and loved on her. But the public school that she was going to would not allow her to walk her, um, her graduation to get her diploma because she was pregnant. Um, so I guess my question is, would they have allowed her to walk that graduation if she aborted her pregnancy? Because that no longer meant like she was pregnant and she could go. This is a public school, by the way. Um, Or is it just that, you know, was she caught like doing something naughty? She wasn't supposed to be doing like, at what point like are schools allowed to do something like that? I just, I think it's wild to me that they stopped her. So our church did a graduation for her. So on Sunday morning, they literally had her put on her cap and gown and she walked in the middle of like all of the seats and everybody cheered for her and supported her and loved on her because she didn't get that from the school. And it was just, it was wild to me. It blew my mind, but also it was so powerful. I just remember sitting there bawling, being like, this is the church that I'm a part of. Like it's a church yeah. that supports their people. And you know, even though like, yeah, she got pregnant outside of marriage, we're still going to love her like beyond and we're going to pour into her and see how we can be supportive of her. We're not going to kick her out because she had sex before marriage. Cause I guarantee you 80% of the congregation did the same thing. Probably 95% of the congregation yeah. just probably didn't get pregnant. Totally. Well, first of all, I want to say like, if anybody listening or if you ever hear of a situation like that, let us at students for life know, because we will go to bat for somebody like yeah. that and totally. battle the school if we have to and be like, Oh no, heck no, she's going to walk and you guys are going to be okay with it. And you're going to apologize to her in the yeah. process. Um, but also, I mean, that's what churches are supposed to be doing. And this is what I yeah. spoke at a church not too long ago. And I said, um, and I've said this before, but if, when a woman and I, and I have been in these shoes, I've been a woman who got pregnant outside of wedlock and has been in church and seen the eyes looking at me she's not married, looking at my finger. I know what it feels like. And you know, when you're not married and you've had premarital sex, you know, that's considered a sin if you're Christian and you wear that sin, that belly is like a, a, you displaying yeah. that sin kind yeah. of. And I say like, if other people had to wear their sins, the way that a pregnant woman wears Come a belly on. or like Come tattoos, on. they would be silent. Literally. It'd be like, like gossip, um, judgment, pornography. Right. Like it would just, like yeah. people would adultery, lying, yeah. you know, like there's just like, no one walks without sin. And it's just so interesting to me where, pregnancy falls on that line specifically yeah. in the church not so much in society because nowadays I think more people get pregnant outside of marriage than they do in marriage like I think because very few people very few people nowadays are waiting for for like I I can't tell you how many friends that I I have in the industry they're not married they have kids right. like they don't plan on getting married and it makes me sad because I do feel like there's like this beautiful holiness in marriage that they they're missing out on but at the same time, I'm like, well, they'll, they'll figure it out one day. Like, I like, I just pray for them and, and that's it. But yeah. again, it doesn't change my love for them. And I think that was Jesus's whole point. Like he didn't like the things that were happening, but he loved the people and he loved them enough to tell them the truth. 
Yes. But without without casting them out, without being hurtful or mean, he came from a place of love. And I think the two percent of psycho Christians out there who are spewing hate, <laughs> those are the ones that get put on television and mm-hmm. they make up what everybody thinks Christianity is. And Christianity is all about grace. Doesn't mean you have to accept somebody's decision, but you have to love them and help them through it. Yes. And I try, I've tried to explain that to people, you know, you can still love somebody regardless of their choices. And I tell my son, I love you no matter what. That doesn't doesn't mean go make any stupid choice, but even if you murdered somebody, God forbid, that will never happen. But even if you murder somebody, I still love you. And yes, I will think you need to go to jail. Yeah. There are consequences to your actions. Yes, yes, exactly. So you don't have to agree with somebody to love them and, you know, be the hands and feet of Jesus. And that's what I hope we see more and more with more churches. I hope we see a lot more people waking up and doing this. Um, I know I'm working on my church, getting more involved in this and doing a lot more, especially with baby showers and loving on these moms, because I promise you, by the time the mom has gotten pregnant, she already feels an overwhelming amount of guilt, pressure, Um, yeah. fear, um, oh maybe a little bit of excitement, happiness. I mean, she's probably feeling every emotion under the sun. Uh, so you don't have to go in. And this is something my dad did that was very amazing. Um, when he found out I was pregnant, I thought he was just going to berate me. And um, I'm not sure if I've shared this on the podcast yet or not, but he literally, he just looked at me and he said, well, and I knew he was hurting. I mean, I just, you know, like your daughter is having sex with somebody she's not married to. And, you know, you had an idea of what you wanted for her to get married and have kids. So I knew he was disappointed, but all he said was, it looks like I'm going to be a grandfather. And just that alone oh. was like, okay, I can do this. I could like, I'm sure he's sad and I'm sure he cried as soon as I right. left. Right. But, but he like, was letting me well, know I'm okay with this. Let's do but it. But I guess you know? like, I don't understand the parents that are like, how could you do this or whatever? It's like, well, what do you mean? How could I do Like that already happened. Like, what yeah. are we going to do now? Yes. <laughs> yes. The act has already happened. Let's move yeah. forward at exactly. that point. And, and you can have a discussion about that. I'm not saying don't have the discussion. Right. When you find out about the pregnancy is not the time to have it, you know, do it at a later time. Let's, let's talk about what we want for the future, you know, that kind of thing. So I want to jump back. Um, just, I have a couple more questions and I want to read something to you. It was from peoplesworld.org, which I don't even know what the website is, but I found it on there. And it says, um, it's basically about Planned Parenthood getting involved in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And the article says, educating the masses on the importance of reproductive rights has always been a challenge. How can organizations fighting for reproductive rights reach past their regular followers and actively educate new people? The answer is by essentially meeting people where they spend most of their time in front of the TV, theater, phone, and computer screens. Planned Parenthood partnered with uh, the 2019 Sundance Film Festival in a series of events used to introduce themselves as creative partners to the film and television industry. These events brought filmmakers, writers, artists, and other creators together to discuss, celebrate, and educate um, accurate media representation of reproductive health and media. According to, I know this is kind of long, but I've got a point here. So according to Alencia Johnson, director of public engagement for Planned Parenthood, over 50% of people actually believe that healthcare information they see on TV and film is accurate. Therefore, we need to make sure that abortion storylines and storylines around sexuality, love, relationships, and birth control, whatever it may be related to gender and reproductive rights is accurate. So basically, Planned Parenthood is strategically partnering with Hollywood to promote abortion accurately. And if you're not watching and you're just listening on Spotify or YouTube, I put uh, quotation marks around that. Um, and obviously they're doing it with their pro-abortion bias across right. TV shows and films. Like h- how do you, uh, how do we combat that? I mean, that's huge that Planned Parenthood is literally working with filmmakers yeah. to say, Hey, this is how you promote abortion. Um, well, it's called television programming for a reason. Um, at the end of the day, Everybody, unfortunately, is after money. Um, yeah. All televisions and movies, like television, movies, like they don't make entertainment because they're just so passionate about art and they want to give it away for free. <laughs> like they make it to make money, right? And how do you make money on TV? You sell ads. Well, whoever is going to pay the most for those ads, those are the people that are going to get get the eyes, right? Like 
um, it, if you have a TV show and Planned Parenthood wants to buy out ad time and they're going to come in at a higher price than anybody else, I guarantee you that TV show is like, oh my gosh, great. They just upped our budget. We'll absolutely take their, the ad time. We'll take that. We'll put, we'll put whatever they need to in our television show. And yeah, we, repro reproductive rights for women, women, that's really important. We should absolutely focus on that because it's worded in a very manipulative way. This is not a reproductive rights situation. We're literally dealing with a life situation. And again, we're going back to life is being taken out of what's happening in the womb and it's being turned and manipulated into something else. And it's very easy to say like, we're helping women, they should be able to have abortions, they should be able to have access to birth control, all this stuff. It's like, okay, well, actually, what's the most important thing that people are looking for all the time? Like when you hear about people who are hurting or suicidal or whatever, they're looking for connection, they're looking for love. Like for most of these women, it comes down to having support, not having somebody who's gonna put them in a chair, suck out their baby, and send them on their way. Like we're talking about real human to human love and support. And when I see all this stuff, I just, honestly, I just see like the enemy cloaked in what looks, Yeah, it doesn't even look pretty to me, but I'm just trying to think for other people of like, okay, well, I want to live a life the way I want to live it. I, I like, again, I'm talking about like 98% of the people. I'm not talking about like the ancestral relationships. I'm not talking about like girls who experience rape and are pregnant. Like right now my focus is like, what is, I think it's 98 or 99. Like it's a, it's a, it's a really high rate of like abortions really are, come down to convenience for most people. And nobody wants consequences for the lifestyle that they're living. And if somebody forces you to face the truth, that guilt, instead of making people like go, oh, like I should look inward. It immediately is blasted outward, usually in a way of yelling and hate and like, you're this, you're that, like, you're terrible. Like, they become out of control because they clearly don't have self-control. And I just, it blows my mind that we're just in a place of, again, it's like the fast food world that we live in. Like, you want fast relationships, quick hookups, quick this, like, you don't want the consequences, that's fine. You don't have to have the consequences. Here's a pill or here, just get an abortion. You, you don't have to deal with your consequences. Not realizing like you're experiencing some spiritual consequences, some like deeply rooted pain that's gonna follow you when you're older. You might not feel it right now, but when you're older, like this stuff sticks around and it breaks my heart for people. I think that's the problem is it's not like, like I think for the most part, pro-life people, are not hateful people. We're not like telling people like, oh my gosh, you have to have your baby. We're just like, please, like how can I help you through this journey? Yeah. Like we want you, we want to support you. We want you to bring life into this world. So how can we help you do that? It's not like we're forcing you to have this child because if you don't, you're terrible. It's like, I think they just set it up in this really divisive way. I don't know how else to explain it other than yeah. that. Well, it's the way that they promote uh, Christianity. And you know, you said like the, the, the few crazy yeah. psycho Christians, they yeah. say that that's how we all are. And then there's the, you know, a couple of people who might be screaming outside of a Planned Parenthood or something um, who, and who knows? I mean, maybe they have had baby saves. Maybe that has worked in some way, shape or form for some type of person. But typically what you see with pro-lifers, the overwhelming majority are like, how can I help you? What do you need? How can I walk this out with you? What resources, like, like I said earlier, if I don't have the resources, I will find the resources for you. Um, I'm working with a mom right now who uh, has twins and she has a tiny little beater of a car that is not, it doesn't work in the snow very well. So, um, we're going to work on getting her some sort of a nice, decent used vehicle that her and her twins can drive safely in the snow. And guess what? The twins are here. Like we still walk alongside them afterwards. Yeah. So this narrative yep. that we don't care is just kind of silly. Yeah. Um, so oh, in actually, can I add to that real quick, yeah. really quickly, there is a company, I think it's letthemlive.org that's yes. doing this where you can sponsor a mom. Um, mm -hmm. And literally like the way you would sponsor a child from another country, you sponsor a mom and you can actually give money 
like mm-hmm. monthly to where you're just constantly supporting her and you get to pick how much you want to give or whatever. But, but truly it's as simple as like the way you would look at like world vision or like sponsoring a child or whatever. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's you get to sponsor a mom who chose life instead of terminating her pregnancy. Yeah. And it is so awesome. So I just like want to shout them out for doing that. Cause I totally, think really so cool. Emily is uh, a friend. I know her who runs the organization and they do amazing really? work and they, they help if a mom, I actually, um, cause I do baby showers and mostly what we do is just like give them all the tangible items they need right off yeah. the bat that, you know, would take that financial pressure off. <laughs> but then sometimes there's like housing that's needed or there's things that are even a little bit bigger or something along those lines. So I have even connected women with Emily to, you know, see what we can do for them yeah. because she even has bigger resources than I do. Mine are just baby showers and that's kind of it. Well, I mean, we've done a little bit afterward too, but, yeah, but that's not, let me tell you, that's not just baby showers. Like that's, it's a huge, huge deal. And, and again, it, it takes a team of people totally. to show up for one person. And, but we're willing to show up again and again and again. And the more we speak out about this and the more love that we can show people and the more grace we can show people, I think it's only encouraging to other people to go, oh, you know what? I want to get involved too. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to help a mom. I want to help her choose life. And I want to help them through the pregnancy once the baby's born. And you do feel connected. You feel super a part of their lives. Yeah. A lot of times I, I I know I have shared this before on the podcast, but I have people who get mad when they like miss out and the baby registry maybe was like filled already and everything was purchased. They're like, add something else. I want to give to this mom. Like, How do I give her something? And I'm like, I'm sorry. It just filled really fast. This is a good problem to have. I love having this problem, but also like we'll have other moms to help. Um, but I do, I have people like literally are jumping at the opportunity to help these yeah. women, which is so incredible and so beautiful because they're never going to meet these women. And often they're, they're, I mean, they're, not going to get a thank you from them. I mean, I might get like a thank you note that is kind of to everybody who helped. Here's a thank you. But like, they don't get to meet the baby. They don't get to hug the woman. They don't get to be there for her. I mean, I get to do a lot of that, which is amazing, but they're just giving of their own hard earned money and they just want to bless someone they care. and, they and genuinely care. yeah. And be there. Okay. I have a, a, two final questions. Um, okay. one of which in May Planned Parenthood released, a ad and kind of like a, uh, whatever, something, a bunch of celebrities signed. Well, I don't know what you would call it. Um, but a bunch of celebrities signed on like Selena Gomez, Billie Eilish, Sean Mendez, Olivia Rodrigo, Ariana yeah. Grande, you, you name it. Um, and basically they're saying that our power to plan our own futures and control our own bodies depend on our ability to access sexual and reproductive health care, including abortion. And I want to know what you think, what has Hollywood gotten wrong about female empowerment? I mean, well, let's start with the fact I love that, that you laugh there. <laughs> <laughs> what is a woman? Yes. There you go. <laughs> this point. Um, I didn't have babies. Should we start there? I mean, again, again, what is a woman? Nobody <laughs> can answer that question right now. Um, and I think here's the problem. We have worked so hard as women to come up and be in this, this beautiful place that we're at right now. And I feel like there is something I've given birth three times now. It is a very special thing that my husband cannot do. And it's something that it's a blessing that I've gotten to experience again and again and again. And it is unique. It is powerful. Uh, it changes you, it molds you. Uh, and with every new pregnancy, I learned something new. I, I became stronger. I grew in all of these things and, or, or through every pregnancy. And I think we're trying to, we're trying to almost like we're saying we're empowering women, but we're taking away something that makes them so powerful. And I, I, I understand where people think they're coming from. They think they're coming from a place like, of oh, well, well women should have a choice. Like if they don't want to have to go through something like that. And, and, and it, they're missing the point of like, we are the only things that can create life. Females are the only things that cre- can create life. Obviously it takes a male, but like we grow a whole world 
in our body. Is that not the most ridiculous thing? That's not something a man can do. It is the most powerful thing in this world. We bring life. That's wild to me. Absolutely yeah. wild. And I think in in all of this, we're losing sight because it's being manipulated into thinking we're helping these women by eliminating their problems. Look, raising kids is not easy. Like I am so beyond blessed and I have really hard days with my kids. So I can't imagine what it's like for women who don't have the financial resources or who do feel alone trying to raise a baby in an area or a season of their lives when they don't feel prepared for a baby. It breaks my heart for them. But because of that, I want to grow the resources for women to know that they don't have to give up that thing that empowers them, that beautiful blessing that they can experience because it could be seen as an inconvenience. So Mm -hmm. again, I think all these people are hopping on this train of women productive rights without really understanding like what they're signing and what they're hopping on. I think if somebody really sat down with them and just said like, what do you, what do you, like, especially Christian women, because now it's all in the church. Like they're like pro-abortion churches and are pro-choice churches, which is kind of wild to me. And I'm like, well, ultimately at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, like, what do you think God thinks of this? Like, really, what do you think God thinks of this? And if, if you're a faith-filled person, he'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, when you say, what is a woman? I'm like, okay, yes, this resonates. Um, <laughs> it is what makes us unique. Otherwise, yeah. you know, what makes us different? We can give birth. You're a CEO, a male CEO. Cool. That's great. I can make an entire human being in my body. Like what right. can you do? You know, that's yeah. something beautiful yeah. that we can do. Right. We should, should be celebrated. <laughs> and also, oh, we can make a whole human body. And then immediately after giving birth, Go into full mom mode, have no time to rest or heal because you're fi- like, you're taking care of that life and keeping it alive. Yep. Like yep. our body, we're wild. We are yeah. wild. A man gets the sniffles and can't get out of bed. He's oh, like, well, I know. like, oh, like <laughs> <laughs> sorry, but you know, Kevin, <laughs> sorry, Kevin. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, but like, yeah, women are absolutely incredible. And obviously men are amazing too in their own way and in their own right. But I really do think there's something so powerful about women that we're just, it's getting lost today. It's really getting lost. I mean, you're seeing it across the board and it, it, it's so, it's really sad. Yeah, that's good. Um, I end every episode with the same question because I'm so curious, everybody's perspective. If you could encourage the listeners who are new to speaking out or uncomfortable speaking out on this issue, what is like the one piece of advice you would give them to encourage them? I would say, what do you have to lose that's greater than life? Life is all we have. And if you have an opportunity to save a life, it will change your life. So speak up. Yeah. That would be it. That's amazing. I love that. I mean, without life, none of our other rights matter. I mean, genuinely, like we have to have life for that. That's great. So where can everybody find you on social media? I know you have a Paris proposal that people should go watch. <laughs> yeah, thank but- you. Thank you. Paris proposal is coming up um, on social media. My Instagram is Vega Alexa. We have a family YouTube channel called La Vida Pena Vega. And so it's La Vida Pena Vega. <laughs> you white people out there. <laughs> um, and then we, we share a family TikTok called Pena Vega. Awesome. I love it. Alexa, thank you so much for joining us. Thank I am such me. a fan. And I, in all my research about you and looking you up and listening to different podcasts you've been on and um, you inspire me a lot. And especially with how graceful you're, I'm a little more harsh in the way that I talk and a lot of the <laughs> stuff that I say, but you're so graceful and joy filled and it just comes across. And I, I can say that's very inspirational for me. Listen, uh, thank you one, but two, we need all different types of personalities because if we were all the exact same nothing would get done so we're all my husband that (laughs) we're all fearless warriors in our own right okay oh thank you so much for joining me